is caffeine safe for women? I suspect based on what you just said that the answer will be yes. But are there um, case conditions where women should be cautious about their intake of caffeine independent of this anxiety thing? I mean, people probably shouldn't uh, drink more caffeine than they can uh, tolerate uh, right. psychologically. No one, male, female, young or old. Yeah. yeah. It's more of a genetic factor than it is a sex factor. Uh, so, I mean, both men and women will be fast metabolizers, slow metabolizers, or not have an effect. That becomes the bigger rock of them. What we do find is in that perimenopausal state, women will become more sensitive to the blood sugar fluctuations that happen with caffeine. So they're used to having coffee in the morning and with something, then halfway through their workout, they become a little bit hypoglycemic mm. because there's changes in um, insulin sensitivity, insulin responses. So there's changes also in blood sugar control and caffeine can exacerbate that. So if you are someone who's like, oh, I always have a double espresso before I go work out and then halfway through, I'm really hypoglycemic. I'm really dizzy and lightheaded. I don't know what to do feel sick or nauseous. Yeah. Yeah. Eat some food. Hmm. Eat some food with it. What about sipping caffeine through the workout? Um, you know, taking that coffee in and just having a sip between sets. Can that offset some of that? Uh, I don't think so. Okay. I hear a lot that people who drink caffeine before a workout, you know, midway through, they're like, I don't feel good. Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't eat. Hmm. That, for me, that just stimulates the desire for more caffeine. But, um, or even, uh, dare I say, a, a half piece of n a nicotine gum which I experimented with, but I was told, and this is why I'm not going to continue to do it, not only is it very habit-forming, it actually is such a vasoconstrictor that uh, I was told by a dermatologist that it's terrible for skin, even if you're not getting your nicotine by smoking, vaping, dipping, or snuffing. So okay. this, this big trend now toward ingesting nicotine as a stimulant and cognitive enhancer and performance enhancer, I think people should at least be aware of the negative effects on skin. Never would have known because I'm not a nicotine person. I'll tell you that half piece of nicotine gum is um, the first time you do it. It's a, it's an unbelievable experience. It's the it's like your first real cup of coffee. Oh, really wakes you up. Yeah, <sighs> and dials you in. I, I recommend nobody do it because oh. it's it feels that pleasant if you like caffeine. I like Shashandra for that reason. Shashandra. Yeah. What's Shashandra? It's an adaptogen. I mean, Ooh, I should know what this you is. Should, you should know what this I should is. Know. Well, I'm here to learn. Okay. Um, Shashandra. Shashandra. Uh, yeah. So it is an adaptogenic plant. So, you know, like ginseng, mm -hmm. Siberian ginseng, maca, mm -hmm. ashwagandha, all mm -hmm. those buzzwords out there. Mm -hmm. Shashandra is another really well-studied adaptogen. And I have friends who say it's like Adderall, where you take it and it's immediate fun focus and function because its main goal is to regulate dopamine, serotonin, and cortisol. So it gives you, gets women and men out of that brain fog, gives them incredible focus. Do you use it? Yep. Are you on it now? I put it in my morning coffee. Okay. Uh, you just sent people down the uh, the rabbit hole the of the, rabbit internet, hole of of the internet. All right. Yeah, yeah. You heard it here first from <laughs> Dr. Stacey Sims. I'm going to give it a try.